Hi everyone, Mark here from PondAlgaeSolutions.com and in this short video I want to go over ultrasonic algae control, the two key things that you must know before you consider buying a system. Stick with me to the end and I'll give you the key number that we look at to determine whether ultrasound will be a good fit for someone or not. So I've done a few videos on ultrasonic algae control and on the Pulsar series of devices and I will include some links below in the description so you can get up to speed on that if you haven't seen them or if you don't know much about uh, using ultrasound to help manage algae in ponds and lakes um, and that'll give you a good primer but this video is specifically about qualifying this technology in a sense to make sure that it fits for what you have going on in your water body. So the Pulsar 4400 is the larger of the two systems and just to give you an idea of how these things cover a body of water uh, we get 360 degree coverage with uh, the Pulsar series for green algae which would be in layman's terms string algae, filamentous algae the range is somewhere around 17 acres and for green water type producing algae, planktonic algae, blue-green, cyanobacteria, uh, the kind of algae that produces harmful toxins. Uh, this particular type of algae can be controlled up to around 120 acres in size. So the ultrasound is a really good choice for large waters and lakes if certain things are in place already. So that's what we want to get into now. The two critical things you have to check before you consider buying one of these devices. Number one, you want to identify or identify the algae species that you're dealing with. That's critical. Ultrasound works on almost all algae, but there are a few species specifically due to their cellular structure that we cannot control well with sound waves, at least yet. And so we want to know if those are present. And so the only way to tell is through microscopic testing. And you collect a very small sample, send it to a lab. You can do this locally if you can find a lab there or you can have us uh, provide a kit and uh, we'll have it sent to a lab that we utilize. But they will identify the algae species that are in there and then we can cross check that with a well-established database going back almost 20 years of using this technology to see if the fit is good. Can that algae in there be controlled well and easily by ultrasound or are there any challenge algae? And it also helps us that that knowledge of what species are involved also helps us to determine the coverage range of the device. As you saw in the previous slide, the control range of green algae versus blue-green algae is different. It's much greater with algae that has less density and so by identifying what we actually have in there we can help to determine the range of the device and range of coverage to fit a system to a particular body of water so it's very helpful to do that. The main thing though is that testing allows us to provide a go no go suggestion as to whether ultrasound will even fit the situation or not and although we've improved this this ratio where we're not seeing as many uh, no-go situations come up there are a few that will still come up and so you want to know that ahead of time many times ultrasound will have an impact a positive impact on the algae growth but it may take other things like aeration or maybe microbial supplementation for a time to help with some other things and so we just want to paint as clear of a picture for the the pond owner as possible and then we can make a, a, a an educated well-informed decision going forward to invest in the technology or not the second thing that is critical in evaluating a situation for ultrasound use and not many people are talking about this yet I hope this changes but you want to make sure that you test for the total phosphorus level in a pond or lake. Phosphorus is a major driver of algae growth and in fact many people consider it the limiting factor for algae in most cases. What that means is that when phosphorus levels are low algae cannot grow beyond a certain point regardless of the abundance of other nutrients like uh, nitrogen-based nutrients. 
If phosphorus levels are high, though, algae will be far more difficult to control using methods such as nutrient mitigation with microbes, and even the application or use of ultrasound will have some trouble sometimes because what happens is the algae has so much fuel in that phosphorus that it can grow very quickly, so fast in fact, that it can outgrow the speed at which ultrasound can knock it down. And so in that way, if you did put an ultrasound system in, even though the algae statistically should be controlled, it may not be able to keep up in certain situations. So here's the key metric number that you want to look at, as promised. It's 200 parts per billion. That's our threshold. If the reading of total phosphorus is above this number, we will normally suggest trying to get the phosphorus level down into a manageable position or into a range where it is lower than this threshold, and then we can expect better control with ultrasound. In testing that you have done, and typically, although there are some simple test strips that you can get online for phosphorus levels, these are general. And I do think that when you're considering an investment like this, you want to probably have a lab do the analysis so you can get a very specific reading. When they provide the test results back, you may see it in parts per million or milligrams a liter. In relation to that, 200 parts per billion is equal to 0 0.2 parts per million, 0 0.2 milligrams a liter. Those are the key numbers. If phosphorus is higher than that, we want to work to bring it down. I'll provide a link below once the video is done. I'm working on it now on some common ways and methods that you can use to lower phosphorus in a pond body. But until that's up, just know that this is the main number that we look at for the threshold or the cutoff of where ultrasound could have some challenges with controlling algae. So those are the two key things. Make sure those are done before you get too deep into the rabbit hole of looking at ultrasound. And if the numbers jive and work, you can definitely consider with more confidence that ultrasound could be of help to you. As always, if you have questions and need additional help with your pond or a pond algae problem, reach out to me at pondalgesolutions.com. I'm happy to help. My name is Mark, and I hope you have a great day wherever you are.